I'm joined by Dr. Melissa Rogerson, who is a lecturer at University of Melbourne. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. We want to talk a little bit about your research you've done on hybrid games. Can you tell me what that what that means? Yes. Yeah, so I, I became really interested in how people were using particularly their phones and tablets, but also websites while they're playing games. And there is this growing kind of number of games that use technology as part of tabletop play. I'm going to put you on the spot for a moment. Mm -hmm. How long do you reckon this has been going on? How long do you reckon we've been putting electricity into games for? Well, I mean, if you think of like operation is battery powered, so there's probably going to be a bunch of games that have been going on for a long time. It's probably going to be, it's either going to be way shorter than I think or way longer. I'm going to go uh, 40 years. Yeah, okay, so we're looking at about 110 okay, years. Yep, yep. So the first, um, I guess what we would call a proto-hybrid or pre-hybrid was a game called Lichtra, which was a quiz game where you had exactly like operation, right, two electrodes. You put a card on the mat and there would be a question and you would have to pick the right so answer. So like true or false. Yeah, yep. yeah, exactly. Now, this game was redeveloped as, or it was often marketed as Electro. I played that game when I was a kid, mm -hmm. right? So that game has been around for a long time and that idea of using current completion to play a game has been around for a long time. But of course we're doing much more sophisticated things these days with apps. Um, so I wanted to have a look at how games were using apps and what the role of the app was in the game, right? Was it just there to be a gimmick or was it there to actually do something productive? I mean, coming from uh, originally before being being board games was a Magic the Gathering player, and that was, you know, everyone was had that an app out for store keeping, because uh, it was just easier than writing down stuff. But then, obviously, we've seen with with board games and tabletop, there's there's a bit more to the apps than just tracking life. Yeah, so we're seeing games that are actually designed from the ground up as a hybrid to have digital components and physical components. A lot of the escape room games that we see, recently we've also seen games like uh, Return to the Dark Tower, My Father's Work, Maple Circus, lots of new games. Oh, and one of my favourites, The Search for Planet X. Um, so lots of new games that really use smart technologies in smart ways. So that they're, that they're really enhancing what you can do with a board game. Absolutely. And, you know, if you've ever played, I, I often come back to the, the search for Planet X, if you've ever played Cluedo with somebody who made a mistake, you know that completely breaks the game. So one of the things that we often see these games doing is using an app as kind of a source of truth. But there's also really clever things that they do. I just got a game, I should have brought it tonight to show you, uh, a game called Ninja Catfoot and the Covert Adventure where you literally strap your phone to your wrist and you're a museum thief, right, trying to steal counters um, from the table, which are objects in a museum. But it uses the accelerometer in your phone and you get sort of sent to the naughty corner if you move too quickly. So really clever uses of that technology. Which sounds a lot like uh, it's Johann Sebastian Joust, which was a PlayStation Move game, uh, which when the music sped up, you could speed up, but when it slowed down, you have to be really... So obviously they're, yeah. that's, that sort of technology which we've seen in video games, obviously been moving across uh, to these hybrid games. Yeah, absolutely. And, and yet it's still very much a tabletop game. Can you tell us a little bit about what we've got set up on the table? Yeah, so moving on from the, the work that I've been doing on hybrid games and, you know, inspired by COVID, um, I became interested in what we're calling distanced play. So the idea that you and I might be in our homes alone wanting to play a board game with one another and wanting to not just log in and play it on a screen but actually play something with the physical pieces of the game. So how can we design games that actually support that innately? We're doing a project using a, a technique that we call research through design. And, and the quick and dirty explanation of research through design is that you make things that aren't good or aren't necessarily good so that you can learn more about what a good thing would look like in that setting. So we've been doing a series of workshops and we as me and Lucy Sparrow, colleague, um, running a series of workshops where we explored what distanced play might look like and we asked people to design games for distanced play. But 
you can't just take someone into a room and say, hello, I'd like you to design a game for distance play right now, please. So what we did was we came up with this um, deck of cards, which we implemented, and the deck of cards have prompts that people can use to build their game. Now, normally, we would play a little drafting game, right, where we'd look at five cards, pick one, pass them on. But I reckon today what we might do is just flip the top okay. card from each deck and see what we come up with. So from the story deck we have... The rubbish tip is overflowing with items that you could put to good use. Okay, and the mechanism? We've got root connection, so building roots to connect locations on the board. The function? The function is storytelling, so digital tools enhance a game's story. And this really tells us, this function card tells us about how we're going to use the technology, which is the last oh. card here. Which is a smartwatch. Right. So it's a root connection game. The smartwatch is involved somehow in telling a story and we're trying to put items from the tip to good use. So we, we, yeah, so we, we might be finding items moving to a different place. Maybe those items are then triggering some sort of story event or... Yeah, um, or, and maybe we need to combine them, right? It's not just finding one, it's finding multiple items and maybe we use our smartwatch somehow to scan them there might be RFID tags, QR codes, something that we can actually check in which cards we've found. And I guess if we're, we're building up the knowledge of other games, we think of like the Unlock uh, series, which has driven games, but that does have, you know, the, the, the puzzle piece of two interconnecting things work together. That's sort of almost what this is doing. This prompt is sort of suggesting to us. Absolutely, mm. yeah. So you can see how we start to build up this idea of what the story might look like just from these four cards. and. We really want to stress that the cards are the starting point, not the end point. You know, if you start with a smart watch and you think, actually, it should be a smart necklace, fine, it can be a smart necklace, right? If you, if you start with root connection and you think, no, actually, it's pick up and deliver movement, fine. You know, we're not, we're not about um, binding people to what's on the cards. It's Just more sparking about, ideas. Yeah. So I, I guess you, with, with the, what we talked about with these prompts is we have sort of an idea of how we would make a... Uh, like a hybrid game with using technology, what, in, with these four prompts, what, what would you do in terms of distance play? Yeah, so we need to think about when we're dealing with distance, we need to think about things like how's randomization going to work. If we're scanning things on a watch, then it doesn't really matter where those things are when we scan them. So that might be something that, that comes into it that we each have have a deck and we're drawing cards or being dealt cards somehow and our watch is actually connecting them together. It might be that we're each starting at one side of the tip and our goal is to connect stuff that we can use to make a caravan, I don't know, and the root connection element is actually that we need to find each other as we okay. move through the tip. And that's something that's come out quite strongly in our research is that there needs to be a reason why the players, why the characters in the game are distanced as well as why the players are distanced. So you, you said you're trying to learn um, from these workshops and, and what people are designing. Uh, so to, so what, what is the, not as the end goal, but what are you hoping to achieve with, these, with this deck and, and with this research? So we're moving towards, I suppose, design guidelines. I'd love to say, you know, we're moving towards cornering the world with our novel distanced play games, but I think there's a different skill set in designing games than there is in, in studying games or researching games. So really what we want to do is understand how we can make better games for distanced play uh, so that other people who have that skill set in designing games can hopefully put, that, put those insights to good use. Melissa, thank you very much for coming down and, and having a chat about your research. Thanks for having me.